Hi, it's Brandy. Welcome to Fluffy Fleece Macrame Tutorials. Today's video will cover the basic knots that every macrame artist needs to know. In today's video, you will learn how to create the most popular knots used in the majority of macrame design. These cords are all 45 inches long, and you'll need eight of them. The first knot that we're going to be creating is a lark's head. Lark's head can be attached in two different ways. It's typically attached to a dowel, a piece of driftwood, or even another cord if you're doing a soft design or something like a coaster. So on this knot, you're going to hold your cord with the loop facing up. Your cords at the bottom are even, and you're going to drape the cord over the back of the dowel and open up that loop and bring your cord through. And then snug. I'll show that knot one more time. I'm gonna take the cord with the loop at the top. You're gonna drape it over the back. Open that loop and bring your cords through. One of the things you always wanna make sure you do when you tighten up your lark's head is to even out your cords when you go to tighten them. That way you're working with all even cords at the bottom. So that is two forward facing lark's head knots. This next knot that I'll show you is going to be a rear facing lark's head knot where previously we did the forward facing and we went over the top and down the back. On this one, we're going to go behind the dowel with the loop, bring it over the top, open up that loop, and pull your cords through. Again, you want to make sure that you even out your cords at the bottom and then pull your lark's head knot tight. So that is a rear facing lark's head knot. So let's do that knot again. We have the even cords at the bottom and we have the loop at the center. We're gonna go behind the dowel with the loop facing up, and bring it over the top, open it up, and pull your cords through. Make sure they're even and tighten up your lark's head. And that is a rear facing lark's head knot. So now I wanna show you how to attach a lark's head in two spots with a single strand so you're already going to have your lark's head on one end and the ends are different lengths so the long end is going to be coming over here and creating a drape that is attached with a lark's head so this is a rear facing lark's head so to do that, you go up the back and down. And you're gonna go over the front and back through and tighten it up. And then what you would do here is you would just take regular cords fold it in half, and you would lark's head these onto the cord, like so. And you would just fill that up with cord. If you got to the point where you had however many you needed, say you were doing two swags and each one had 20 cords on it and you had those 20 cords on it and you had an area of, of um, filler cord that was extra, you would basically slide these up to where they needed to be and then you would come in and tighten. Like this. 
and then that would give you your drape of however many cords you need to do. So this is all rear facing. I'll do this again with front facing, Lark's like head. So again, I'm gonna do a front facing Lark's head. I'm starting off with uneven cords. So this one's really long. And we're gonna go over the top and bring these cords through. For the front facing Lark's head and you can see how different the length is in the cords. And the long one is the one that's gonna drape over. So on this one, you go over the top. Behind, then over the top again, and down. So, then you would attach, um, the back to the front, you would do the forward facing Lark's head. Just like you attach it to a dowel or a stick. It's just getting attached to a cord. So we'll put three on here and then show you again how to cinch up the cord if you have excess length. So you'll push yours up there to the end. And I actually sometimes can just go like this over and over. But if you don't want to put like the pressure on it, you just kind of pull on that and then keep your finger on top and then tighten up your forward facing Lark's head again. Okay, so a lot of times when you have draped cords like this, it's not on a dowel rod or a stick. You want to lock these cords. And typically what I do is just go from the back and then bring it through this loop and just tighten that up. So you could do it, that's facing that way. So that way we went from the back, but if you wanted to go from the front, I'll show you how that looks. That is what it looks like when it's locked in from the front. So you have either a way of doing it I prefer it, and I'll show you on this side, I prefer it to go from the front. So we'll do both of them that way. So you're taking your cord over the front of it to the top and back. And that can get cinched up very tight. And that then locks this cord in really nice. how you do that. The next knot we'll be creating is a left facing square knot. There are two directions that you can make your square knot left or right and it all depends upon which cord you start with. When you're creating knots there's going to be what is called filler cords. Filler cords are basically the cord that the knot is created around. The working cord is the cord that you actually tie the knot with. So these are two working cords on the outside, two filler cords on the inside. On a left hand square knot, you're going to make a little loop. I think of it as a four. You're gonna take your right hand working cord and you're gonna go behind the two filler cords back through this loop. Tighten up. You can push that up a little bit and tighten again. And now you're gonna make your four on the opposite side to finish this knot. So you're going to go to your right side. You're gonna drop this cord in the front, the left working cord. You're gonna go behind the two filler cords and you're gonna pull that through. Tighten up these cords. 
and that is a left hand square knot. You can tell that it's a left hand because all left hand square knots are going to have this line on the side. To show the left hand square knot one more time, I'm just gonna tie a knot directly below the previous knot. I'm gonna start with that four on the left hand side. We're gonna make sure that the right hand side working cord is over the top. We're gonna go behind the two filler cords and pull through the loop. So right now you have a knot and a half to finish off and create that second line on this side. You're gonna start with this right-hand side working cord. You're gonna ensure that the left-hand side working cord is over the top. And you're gonna go behind the two filler cords through the loop pull to tighten. So that is two left hand square knots. Now we're going to create a right hand square knot. Again, you have your two working cords and your two filler cords. Your four is going to go on the right hand side. You're going to put your left hand working cord over the top and then you're going to run it behind the two filler cords and through the loop. You're gonna to go to the left-hand side with the four, bring that right working cord over the top, back behind and through the loop. And now you have your line that shows you that this is a right-hand square knot. We'll continue on and tie another knot, starting with that right-hand side, create the four, bring the left working cord over the top, behind the two filler cords and through the loop. If you're tying square knots, one of the tips I can give you is if you ever lose track of where you're at and which side you need to work from, just look at the knot above. So if you have a finished knot, which would be like a left hand square knot, you're gonna automatically make your four on that side and that will create the long line through here. So we're going to do that second right hand square knot and we're gonna, because that line is on the left hand side, we're gonna start with the four on that side. So we're gonna bring the right hand working cord over the top and go behind the two filler cords and that finishes out our second knot. So they're always going to alternate so now with this line here on the right hand side, you know that you have to start your four on this side and bring it through. And that creates the line on the other side. So it's an easy way to remember when you walk away from your project, take a break, go eat lunch, which sides you need to go back to. The next thing that I'd like to teach you is what a sonnet is. A sonnet is a long vertical row of knots. So we are working right now, I have one full knot, two knots and a half. If I continued down and made a long line of vertical square knots, it would be considered a sonnet. So if I just continue on knotting, and a sonnet can be however many number of knots in a row, it can be a sonnet of spiral knots. It can be a sonnet of square knots. It could even be a sonnet of switch knots. The knots don't really have to be tight together. You could actually space knots out and it would still be considered a sonnet. It's just a long vertical row of knots. So right here is one, two, it's three and a half knots and it's a sonnet. A square knot sonnet. Okay, so we're gonna tie a berry knot again. We're gonna create it out of the left hand square knots. I'm gonna leave that little gap at the top and we're gonna create a total of three left hand square knots. Two, three, and a 
bring the two center cords through. And secure it with a half square knot underneath. berry knot. So now I want to show you that you can actually create two sonnets with a total of six cords. So most of the time you're going to be creating your square knots or your sonnets with say four cords, two filler cords, two working cords, but you can actually use as few as three cords in a sonnet or a knot. So let's go ahead and do just say two square knot sonnets. So I'm going to do left hand square knots over here on the left hand side. On the other side, I'll do right hand. So you can see it's just one cord in the middle. Like that. And I'll come over here and do right hand. So with a total of six cords, you're able to create two sonnets rather than having to use four cords for each sonnet. Okay. They're attached at the center. So we can attach these together underneath with one square knot. And then you can continue on with your row and then this could be an option for creating say a, a swag for a layered macrame So if you continued on with longer sonnets, joining it in the middle again, you could turn that into a long double swag. So one of the things that I want you to look at here is how we, again, mirrored our knots. So these are left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. So if they were all left hand, they really would have a different visual appearance also when you do this and you have like one of the openings at the end so this could be used in a swag to attach a tassel or additional fringe things like that it's a it's a good place where you could attach something but all of these lengths whenever you mirror images these openings are going to be the same size your knots are going to be always facing the outside or facing the inside so you're going to get a more uniform design if you mirror your knots left right to continue on with single row of knots using four cords now we're going to create what is called a switch knot which uses square knots but in creating the switch knot you'll go ahead and go all the way to the top to secure up here so creating the switch knot basically what you're going to do is you're going to take a square knot at the top and you're going to switch your working cords and your filler cords. So normally these outside cords, the cords you tie all of your knots with are the working cords. The cords that you tie around are the filler cords. They are the filler inside the knot. So on a switch knot, you're going to take your working cord and you're gonna switch it with your filler cord. So I'll show that again. You're gonna take your, two, your fingers in the middle and you're gonna pull those out and let these drop in the middle in the front. So this is now how you're gonna tie 
your switch knot, which is going to be secured with just another left-hand square knot. You're just switching your working cord and your filler cord to give this neat little design. I use this in a lot of my projects. I feel like it creates a more feminine design, um, a little more of a like kind of lacy feminine feel to it, but that's a switch knot. So you can continue down further and switch again and tie another knot. And then this would just keep going and it would be considered a switch knot sonnet. You can get your cords as long as you want and, and have your sonnet be say two coming from each side and they can attach together and become a swag for a layered macrame design. The next knot we're gonna create is gonna be another sonnet, and it's gonna be a spiral sonnet. So a spiral sonnet is a series of half knots. It's the same half knot you use in a square knot, but you're not gonna be going back and forth to create the square knot. You're only going to be using either a right-handed half knot or a left-handed half knot over and over and over again, and that's gonna create a spiral. Now, one of the unique things with a macrame spiral sonnet is the twist, depending upon whether you're starting with your right or your left, the twist is gonna twist one way or another. So a lot of times when I use spiral sonnets as say a swag, I create my two separate sonnets and I have one curve to the right, one curve to the left. So it's just ensuring that you mirror the pattern from one sonnet to the other and it really does make a big difference on how your finished macrame project looks, how the shadows catch it and how, how evenly it lays or how the swag lays. So I'll show you that as well. So starting out here, we're gonna go with all left hand half knots. And that's gonna go over and over and over again. So the left hand half knot, the four, you got your two working cords on the outside. You're gonna bring your right working cord behind the filler cords and you're just gonna keep going. Now this knot is gonna turn this way. One of the things I recall when I first started macrameing is, oh my gosh, okay, it's twisting, what do I do? Well, when it gets twisted, I mean, you can just twist it yourself. You always will continue on with the left hand half knot. So you don't, you don't switch up your direction ever, even when it's twisted all the way around. They're all the left hand half knots to create your sonnet. So that is a left hand spiral sonnet. So now I'm gonna create a right-hand spiral knot just so you can see the difference on how they lay and why it does matter to go ahead when you're doing a swag to do a mirror image, a left-hand spiral sonnet and a right-hand spiral sonnet. So on this, we're gonna do all right hands. So the four is gonna start on your right-hand side. See, we're twisting this way. So there we go. So that's why it's important to do your mirror images. If I did two left hands next to each other, you wouldn't get a symmetrical pattern. So that's one of my big tips for any macrame artist. Always go ahead and mirror your image if you're doing swags. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to create alternating square knots. So I'm gonna also show you 
how it looks when you mirror your sides. So some patterns you might want all of your left side to be left facing, right side to be right facing so that your line knots come down on each side. So that's what I'm gonna do here. On, on this side, I'm gonna do all left facing. On this side, I'm gonna do all right facing on the square knots. So the left one, and we're gonna do a left facing square knot. I'm gonna have these nice and snug up at the top. This is just, I always do when I'm doing a center knot, it's always a left facing square knot. So then on this one, I'm gonna do a right facing square knot. Let's go ahead and add two more cords onto this. Okay, so I have four, so I may have a teensy bit of OCD, so I wanted to have two left facing and two right facing. So we're gonna do another right facing square knot. And so you're gonna go in between to do alternating. So. Typically, you're no longer going to use your two outside cords. You're, you're going to move to do three knots in between each of the knot that's up above. So you're going to take two from your right hand square knot, two from your left hand square knot. And on this side, we're going to go with a right hand square knot and we're going to tie that below these guys. So you can see you have your lines on the same way. This one's going to be a left hand square knot. So your line's facing out. And we're going to go ahead here in the middle and just do a left hand square knot. that row. We're not going to use these two cords. Go ahead and get them out of the way. And we're going to do a right hand square knot and a left hand square knot. Now you can do these however you want. You can tie all right hand square knots, all left hand square knots. It, it's personal preference. I like things to look very symmetrical when I'm creating my designs, so I tend to to mirror most of my knots. So say like if I was to do a diagonal double half hitch row, these would really look the same from side to side. So we're gonna go in the middle with the four and I'm just gonna, since it's in the middle, I'm just gonna tie a left hand square knot. these center cords just to make sure that is all even so that's it that's alternating square knots and you have left your left side has left square knots your right side until you get down to the bottom has right square knots so the reason I like to do that is they really lay nice I'm just gonna do this real quick so you can see they really lay nice when you're doing say a row of diagonal double half hitch to border your design. I'll teach this knot as well. I'm just doing this really 
quickly so you can see what it looks like when you marry your knots. So to me, it's a much nicer finished design where you have all of your facing lines mirrored. I'll give you a little inside view on what I do after I do a tutorial. So these cords, they're taped at the bottom so they don't unravel. I use these cords over and over and over. They're the same cords. It's a very high quality macrame cord. The brand is Right Rope. It's a US family owned business. They do ship internationally, but I really am pleased with the quality of this cord. I said I've probably, with these cords, I've probably done 50 or so tutorials um, tying and untying knots, but it's a firm cord so your knots really don't collapse down. Um, every knot tends to be a little more evenly tied when you're dealing with a firm cord. So highly recommend rightrope.com. I'll link rightrope.com in the description. So I also have on top, they usually have discounts going on. But, um, if you use FFM5, that's my discount code. So for this one, I'll show how to do a alternating switch knot. Like I said before on switch knots, I still start with just a regular square knot at the top. So I'm gonna do a row of just regular left-hand square knots across the top. Okay, so I have my row of square knots. For any kind of alternating knot, you're not gonna use the two outside cords. So I'm gonna switch knot. Let's start with the very middle. You're gonna have your two square knots coming from above, two cords from each knot. Normally, on an alternating knot, your working cords and filler cords, always it's just gonna be the outside and the center for the filler. But on a switch knot, you're gonna switch your cords. And then after that, you're just gonna tie a square knot below it. So I typically, when I do alternating switch knots, they're gonna have space in between them. If you just go up next to it, you really, you can't get them close together. So it's gonna be a longer, pattern. It's going to be a lot longer or lengthier than if you were going to just do square knots. It's also going to have a lot more texture. So that's the end of that square knot. And same thing over here. We're going to take the two outside cords, switch them to the middle, and just tie the square knot. And your focus on these is to get this amount of space the same in between your knots. Okay. Again, switch it to the center and tie your knot. So 
So now we're gonna go get rid of the two outside ones. And we're gonna switch it to the center and tie your square knot. Switch that to the center, tie a square knot around it. Okay, so that's your pattern. And then a lot of times what you'll end up doing is you'll spread your top knots out a little bit so the pattern shows up better. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to create a horizontal row of double half hitch but we're gonna make a design and then it's gonna lead into diagonal rows of double half hitch. The center is going to be alternating square knots. So we want the center of our cord to end up right here, so in the middle. So for this, whenever I start the row of horizontal double half hitch, it's hard to do if you're having to hold on to this cord. So I like to use these little clippies. Um, they make it very easy. It, you know, you can use it if you're on a small rod. If you're on a piece of driftwood, you'd have to like maybe tie it up with a piece of string or something like that. So this cord that goes across is gonna be our filler cord. All eight of these cords here are gonna be our working cords. So we're gonna start off with a knot that's called double half hitch, which is two half hitch knots in a row. So you're gonna take your first working cord, you're gonna go up and over, and then behind, and through that loop and tighten it up. Same thing, you're gonna take that same working cord, you're gonna go over the front, back behind, and through that loop and tighten it up. You're gonna go up to your next working cord. Same thing, you're gonna go over the top, back behind and through the loop. You'll do that twice on each, with each working cord. So, don't need your clip anymore. So this is what you're gonna end up with. And it's a horizontal row so you're gonna continue on and do that with the other three lark's head knots, so a total of six strands that you're gonna to continue to work with. So over the top, back behind, nice and tight, same thing. So in this design that we're going to create, the center is going to be all square knots and it's going to be fully surrounded by the row of initially the horizontal double half hitch and then we'll take those, the half hitch row and take it diagonal down both sides to enclose your pattern. So that's your row of horizontal double half hitch. Okay, so we're done with that horizontal row of double half hitch. So we're not going to use the filler cord right now that we used to create that double half hitch. We're just going to use these working cords. 
Just like we've done previously, we're gonna use four strands to create our design. So four strands for each square knot. Where I'm gonna go ahead also like I talked about and I'm going to mirror the cords. So I'm gonna do a left facing and a right facing square knot. This of course is not something you have to do. But I like my designs to be a bit more uniform and symmetrical, so it's what I typically do. So get those up nice and snug by pulling, pulling on these center cords, the filler cords, and just kind of pushing up push the knot up, okay? So you're not gonna use these two. You're just gonna concentrate on the four in the middle and you're gonna tie another square knot. Just a left facing square knot. So on these, you can see that these are not really even, they're kind of puffy. So individually, you can pull these, knot, these filler strands down to really get it nice and even and get a nice opening in the middle so that's it for our square knots now we're going to use the filler cord and we're going to create diagonal double half hitch rows so we're going to do this one first So this gives you a rounded corner, which is nice too. And we're gonna use this one coming out the side for the filler cord, and these are our working cords to create the diagonal double half hitch. I'm just trying to get the cord, the filler cord right here to look about the same from side to side. There we go. We're gonna join the ends together. So when you do a bottom corner to join two diagonal double half hitch, one of the cords becomes your filler cord, the other cord becomes your working cord. So sometimes I just try and look at it and I, I try and see which side looks a little bit longer and actually this side looks a little bit longer. The other thing I do is I just kind of lay them out like this to see which one it seems like will will lay better once it's tied. And I'm actually gonna go with this as the filler cord, and I'm gonna tie with the working cord over here. So that's just the diagonal double half hitch knot to bring that together. So that's that design. And it uses one cord to create your border for your uh, alternating square knot. So another design feature you could do, a lot of people like to do a row of double half hitch to really lock these in and typically you'll have a working cord and it can be a completely different working cord that you can attach up and run, run across or you can use the ones that hang down and then you'll either do a point down at the bottom and up but I'll show you a way that you can make it more rounded it's a knot that you don't see that often so let me just show you these will be 
the double half hitch here. And do the same on this one. So now your goal is to create a rounded row of the double half hitch rather than the point. So I overlap these cords that are the filler cords. So you're still going to use them as the filler cord, but you're going to tie double half hitch over two cords. So there's your first one. Second one's gonna come through this way. Okay, first one coming through. Tightening up over here. And then running back through like this. Okay, so then the cords that you're gonna deal with here you need to pull through your filler cord to tighten it all up. So these are your filler cords that came from down here. And this allows you to make kind of a rounded bottom like that. So now we're gonna do diagonal double half hitch. Go to the center and take your cord that's on the right hand side of the center and that's gonna be going down the left side. It's gonna be your left angle. These cords are your working cords for this side. And these cords will be your working cord to create that angle. So you're gonna start off with your very first working cord and you're gonna go over the top, back behind, and pull that through the loop you created. Slide it up and snug it up to the top. Same thing, are your filler cord at the same angle, and you're gonna create that little loop. And this is gonna go behind the filler cord and through the loop, and tighten it up to the top. So you're done with that cord. You're gonna move on to your next working cord and you're gonna continue on the same way, creating that loop and pulling your cord through the loop. So same again, create that little loop and bring this cord through the loop. Same angle. I like to bring my cords in nice and tight to ensure that I don't get too much of a gap. I still want to try and keep these cords going vertically rather than cur ending up being curved. Okay. I'm going to use the cord coming out from what was originally a working cord. So we'll tie that up and we're going to do the same thing with our, with our double half hitch knots. So, and you can see how it's very squared here. Just 
continue on with our knots. Trying to match up the angle. So, and you're trying to match up the length of the strands. So this one, you wanna match up to this length and try as best as you can to keep it at that same length. So if you didn't do a very good job keeping them the same length, then you'd start kind of going off of a true squared pattern. So right there is where you're wanting to end up. And you'll focus on the same thing as you go across and tie your knots with your working cords. This one and this one, you want to try and get them to be about the same and you want your angle to be a really true angle. So that's this one. And your last cord. To match up there. Okay. So one of the other things that I suggest you do is kind of pull on that filler cord just a little bit to make sure that these knots are up as far as they need to go to make sure that these lengths are even. And that is good so just let these guys come out a little bit so now there's two ways to do your corners you can either continue to use your filler cord and this will give you a curved corner or you can use this as your filler cord and it'll give you a squared off corner so some people take this and use the filler cord and tie their first knot with this and I'll show you what that looks like. I don't do this. I don't like it as well. I don't like how the end looks right here. So if you go up and you use the one up above, I'll show you how that looks. So this is your square. So you're gonna take the cord up above and that's gonna be your first knot. Nice and snug up next to the one above. Like that. So I'll do a square, a corner, a sharp corner on this side, and then I'll do a rounded corner on this side. So you're trying to keep these two lines parallel. Okay, so that's very squared. So the other option that a lot of people use, this would make a kind of a bigger square because you're, you're not losing this cord as a working cord. So you're gonna have kind of more, more knots in it. So you're gonna take the same filler cord and you're just gonna start tying your, your knots this way. Same diagonal double half hitch. Mm -hmm. 
This I actually like for rounded diamonds the best. But if I'm doing like a really kind of sharp edge geometric pattern, then I always go to the squared corners. So you can see how it gives you a little bit like larger square and a softer edge than doing the squared corners. So those are your two options and my two preferred ways of turning corners. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish the squared off one just so you can see how it looks all completed. When you're tying these knots, you want to try and again, just like up here, you want to try and keep your lengths the same. So as we go along, we just kind of want to eye across there and make sure it looks the same. lengths to match up. Looks good. Okay, and then joining these together to make your square, so you want to make sure things are looking really even before you tie your bottom knot. So I can either go that way or I can go that way. And I think I'm gonna go with this being the filler cord and this being my working cord to join them together. And that is a square. Okay, so let's show you how to create a horizontal row of vertical half hitch knots. So this is gonna be your working cord and it's long on this end and short on this end. These are all of your filler cords, so you're not gonna be tying any knots with the filler cords. Your working cord needs to go to the back with your filler cords over the top. And you're just gonna tie a half hitch, bring it up to the top. Tie another half hitch and bring it up to the top nice and tight. Now you're going to go underneath again. This is your working cord, these are your filler cords. So this is the knot that is most frequently used in pixel art. I have not done pixel art myself, but from what I understand, this is the knot that's used most commonly for that. So the next row that we're gonna do, we're gonna start the same way. We're gonna go ahead and clip it up. So we're now gonna use these two cords that hang down one from, 
from each knot above. I'm gonna go underneath and do a half hitch. Same way that you started the previous row. And again. So you don't need that clip anymore. And we're gonna pull those filler cords a little bit to make sure that those that's up nice and snug. Your working cord is going to go back behind. So you have a filler cord coming from each knot. So you're not going to use this cord and you're not going to use that cord. So you're going to go again and do alternating. So it's going to be one, two, three, it'll be four knots on this section. So here's the other way that you can start it. So you're going to twist, twist again. That way both cords are in the middle. It's what locks them in. And then the cords that you're going to use as your filler cords just kind of push through. And this is also how you tie the knots if you're working directly from a spool of cord. Now I wanna show you some of the finishing knots that are used. So these can be in-strand knots or they can be used at the very bottom of a macrame project. They're great for keychains, at the bottom of tassels, and just to add texture into macrame wall hangings. So to start off with, this is a barrel knot and it's a twisted barrel knot, the way that you tie it. This is a one-strand braid this is the little leaf pattern, and it's a little bit of a woven back and forth in and out. And this is the standard barrel knot, single strand, and it's just uh, has three wraps used to create this barrel knot. So these two barrel knots are created completely different. This barrel knot you can do on any millimeter cord. It's easy that way and you can make it really, really long. However long you want, it does use a lot more cord. This barrel knot, I tend to only use on smaller millimeter cord and I tend to only wrap three or four times around. Once you get above four wraps, each wrap ends up being a little, a little ridge on the barrel. Once you get above four wraps, it gets really difficult to tighten it down properly where it looks good. So when that happens, I switch to this barrel knot, typically for a larger millimeter cord, or if I want a longer barrel knot. So to start off, for this one strand barrel knot, we're gonna make a loop, and we're just gonna start wrapping the cord around both strands leaving the loop at the bottom so it's gonna to continue to go down to cover these two strands and you'll have a little loop at the bottom. So continue wrapping, keeping it tight 
as you wrap. So kind of keep a finger on it or a thumb on it every time you wrap it around. onto it and pull down. So those can be as long as you have a long enough cord to do it on, you can continue wrapping and make these really long as long as you're able to pull through to tighten it up. The ends just get snipped off at the end. Or if this is in the middle of a long strand, you would just leave the end dangling down from there. I'm gonna go over here to show you two styles, the same style that we just did here, but also just the basic barrel knot and how I tie it. So on this one, it's an in strand, so it's just a single strand. You wrap it around your hand and you're just gonna take your thumb and finger and wrap it around the one cord so you can see how it is. So you'll take the top cord and the bottom cord and you'll just tighten that up and that creates your barrel nut. So it's really easy when you're doing a three wrap barrel knot, but when you get into a four wrap barrel knot and a five wrap, it tends to get a lot more difficult to tighten the wraps down. So if you need a longer barrel knot, you're gonna do this style over here. So I wanted to teach you one of the unique features of doing a long barrel knot, this type of barrel knot, with a smaller millimeter cord. So this is a four millimeter cord, and we're gonna just wrap as many wraps as we can get out of this length of cord. You're just gonna keep wrapping it around, kind of keeping your finger on it so it doesn't loosen up. You do want this to be quite snug when you do your wraps. Otherwise, when you tighten it down, it tends to loosen a little bit. So you want it to be evenly tight all the way down and quite snug. So you just continue wrapping Till you get to the bottom where there's there will be a little loop and then once you get to the bottom where the loop is you're going to push your working cord the wrapping cord through the loop so that's where we're at now so we're going to push this cord end through the bottom of this loop right there like that now my favorite feature of this is this is gonna twist when you pull it down. So it has to be pulled down to tighten and then you're gonna end up with this cute little spiral. So those are really fun to use. Uh, obviously at the bottom of projects, uh, macrame wall hangings, keychains, and things like that. But that gives you a lot of texture at the bottom of a macrame wall hanging. So those are your two different options for a barrel knot with a, a smaller millimeter cord. It's really, again, difficult to do this, this wrap barrel knot on a thick cord. It tends to not want to tighten up. So here's an in-strand braid. It can go all the way down to the bottom of a cord or it can be in the middle. You just kind of bring it through. And then that one came behind, so this one goes behind and through. That goes behind. Twist this. And then that goes behind and through the back. There you go. So that's a little braid. The last one is a leaf, but it starts the same way. You're gonna do a loop 
and you'll go weaving back and forth with the cord. The whole time you're just going to weave it through back and forth. I like to give it one more like that and then pull down and hopefully it gets a more point at the bottom. And so that's the difference between a couple different or little texture knots that you can put in. So this one has four five, this one has four, four, and that includes that little top wrap. So they can look a little bit different, but they can be finished, you know, how, however, however large of a leaf that you want to create. So that's it for some of the finishing knots. That's uh, the barrel knot that's done with a little bit smaller cord, wrapped over your hand, wrapped three times or four, and then you grab the top and the bottom and you pull. That's my favorite one and the one I use the most. And that's it. And something I'll show you on this barrel knot. These barrel knots, the little ones, are really hard to untie. These are not as hard. So you just, depending upon how tight you've run it through, you're just gonna pull the cord out at the bottom and pull and it comes untied. So it's a lot easier to untie. Where these are not. You have to kind of get in there. They're typically done quite tight, pulled quite tight. And it's just knotted and knotted and knotted. So it's much more frustrating if you have to untie them. You're just looping over a double strand into a forward facing lark's head. And I want to show you alternating half hitch with a single strand and with a double strand. So alternating half hitch, basically on this it's a half hitch and every time you tie a half hitch you're alternating which one is your is the filler cord and which one is the working cord. So we're going to start off with this one being the working or the filler cord and this one being the working cord. So you're just going to tie a half hitch. You're going to go there and you're going to tighten it up. This one is now your filler cord and this is your working cord. So you're going to tie a half hitch and bring it up. This is your filler cord now. This is your working cord. This is your filler. This is your working Filler cord on the left, working cord on the right. And just keep going back and forth. And this is an alternating half hitch. It's one of my favorites to do on like more feminine designs. I kind of like it. I think it, it, the little dots are, seem a little more feminine to me. Um, so now we're gonna do on this one, a two strand. So we're gonna do two strands at a time, and we're just going to alternate these. So then now this is your filler and this is your working. When you're doing these, you want to make sure that they lay smoothly together. They come out correctly and lay smoothly. So lay that one down. It's now your filler. This is your working. And just keep going back and forth. So that's a double strand alternating half hitch. Nice and chunky. So the last thing we're gonna go through, I'm just gonna do really quickly alternating half hitch. Um, I think I'll just do five of these on each one, five or six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So when you're doing this other side, I would just 
do it opposite. So your first one is over here and then it'll match up. So I'm gonna show you a gathering knot on attaching, these would be considered sonnets again, uh, alternating half hitch sonnet. So we're gonna do a gathering knot. Okay, so I'm gonna use a four millimeter cord. This is what I would normally do um, to be a gathering knot at the bottom of this. So you can actually kind of hook these over the top of your dowel, keeps it out of your way. If your cord's long enough, make your little loop at the bottom. I'm probably gonna wrap this five times. So you got your thumb over it, you get it nice and snug. And your second wrap needs to go just below the first one. And then that, once you've done that, it locks the cords in place. And then you're just gonna keep wrapping around. Like right now at the front, there's like three wraps. Now there's four wraps, five wrap, five wraps. So up here, it, sometimes it's a little loose. So you can actually, you'll see it go in, you can actually pull this cord to tighten that up evenly. And then I usually pinch them a little bit just to make sure it's nice and round. So I think there's six wraps now in total. And we're gonna bring the last wrap through the loop and hold it in place. And then we're gonna pull this cord up. So right now it's nice and tight, but we're gonna pull it into the wrap. And you'll see it kind of go up in there. So you want it to be in the middle of the wrap and I usually push on it just to kind of seat it in there. And typically you wanna cut both of these, the top and the bottom. Even if they were all the same length, like if, if you did a wrap with the same cord, you still wanna cut this because if like you went to pull on it and straighten it out, it's feasible that the cord could be pulled and the gathering knot could be undone. So you really do kind of want to cut the end of these. That's it. Thank you for joining me for this beginner to intermediate macrame knotting guide. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like the video and leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and set up notifications. On the last screen, please select the center logo to subscribe to my channel.